2 Kings chapter 2, and it came to pass when the Lord would take Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Terry, here I pray thee, for, Lord hath, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophet that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou not that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophet that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master's head uh, from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said, Terry, here I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And as the Lord, and he said, As the Lord liveth, and as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And the fifty sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off, and they stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. It came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire. And parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah. That's a little more. Hold on. Took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah. And when he had also smitten the water. I mean, what did you think he said? Where's the Lord God of Elijah? Come on here. My God have mercy. When he also smit the waters, they parted hither and thither. And Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophet, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Heavenly Father, thank you tonight for your words, your will, your way. Touch, bless Quicken and strengthen. Lord, in the words of my good friend, Brother Rick Simpson, help me to say what you'd have me to say. Nothing more and nothing less. Anoint my lips of clay and touch the hearts of our people. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, thank you very much. And here's what I want to preach on tonight. God may change the man, but he hasn't changed the plan. Hallelujah. God may change the man, but God has not changed the plan. That's what God told me to preach to you tonight, and I'm going to do my best to help it. Hallelujah. Whenever there is a changing of the guard, changing of preachers, whatever, uh, it's no small task when... Uh, that's no small change to go from a, a, a man that had been here for 37 years to a young man. And I'm going to tell you here tonight, having been in his shoes, that's no easy task. I remember going to Louisville, Kentucky, trying to fill the shoes of a man that had been there for 30-some years. And uh, I don't think anyone gave me much of a chance of doing anything for God. And I didn't know a whole lot, but I knew God. I said, I knew God. About 23 years old. And I want to tell you, God did it again. And saved right there. As time goes on in life, and in every church across America, and if Jesus tarries, there will come a time when someone will fill the pulpit that I am filling now. And there will always be times, and there's always hours when God changes the man. 
But the plan of God never changes. God has changed the man for this church. But the plan of God for this church has never, ever changed. And that's what I want to preach to you tonight. When Elisha realized that Elijah was going to be taken away, the Bible said they started out at Gilgal. And you see, Gilgal was the place of separation. This was where, when they first crossed the Jordan River, they first encamped at Gilgal. Amen. It was the place, amen, that God wanted to roll away the reproach of Egypt. And he said, we're going to start a brand new day. Oh, stay with me tonight. Hallelujah. If this church or any other church is going to do anything for God, we've got to start at the place called Gilgal. Amen. God may change the man, but brother, the call of separation and the call of coming out from the world and the call of living holy has never changed. Amen. The plan of God is we still got to go to Gilgal, the place where God will bring a separation between us and the world. Hallelujah. We're called out with the ecclesia. We're different. We're holiness folks. We're Pentecostal folks. And let's never lose the shout. Let's never lose the message. Let's never lose the burden. My God, we started at Gilgal. And that's where God wants us to start at. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo. He said, I got to go to Bethel. You stay right here. And he said, no. If you're going to Bethel, I've got to go to Bethel too. Woo! And every church that's ever going to make it has got to go to Bethel. Because Bethel is the place of the altar. That's the place that Jacob met God when he was fleeing, when he was running. Amen. When he didn't know what he was going to do, he fell there that night at Bethel. And God dropped a ladder down from earth to heaven. It was there at Bethel that he met God. Oh, let me tell you something. No church will make it without an altar. No church will make it without a Bethel. If we forsake the altars, if we forsake prayer, we might as well shut the doors. We've got to have a Bethel to make it. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yes, sir. One preacher told his church, he said he got up and announced one service. He said, we're going to take the altars out. Oh, brother. My God, two or three jumped up and said, no, nah, we're not going to take the altars out. What's wrong with you? And he said, hold on just a minute. He said, the reason why we're going to take the altars out is because they're no longer being used. My God, I want to tell you the power of this church, the power of this ministry, the power, amen, that God has given us is found at the altar. That's where the fire burns. That's where the Holy Ghost burns. That's where convictions will fall among you is at the altar. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I come on here right now. You know I'm telling you right. Some of them old timers couldn't read their name in boxcar letters. Oh, I said they couldn't read their name in boxcar letters. They butchered the, 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 the king's English. Yes, sir. They were a little ignorant. They were unlearned. We made fun of them. Some folks did and said they were good to unlearn. But I tell you what they knew how to do. They knew how to pray in the trees, in the woods, by the stove, by the couch. My God, they knew how to pray. And that's why God healed and did miracles. We need an altar. I said we need an altar. And we need a revival of an altar in our churches one more time. Woo. Oh, hallelujah. Come on here. We want an hour and a half of singing. We don't mind a half hour, 45 minutes of preaching, and about two minutes of praying. Hello? Woo. Come on here. 
here now. You just might as well get with me. If you keep fooling around, I'm going to ask God to help me a little more. Glory, glory, glory. Yes, sir, brother. No, Jai. You say, well, and let me tell you something. You know, uh, you know some, some are just sort of like the sons of the prophet. We're going to stay to see what happens. I'll tell you exactly what's going to happen if nobody prays. If we forsake the altars, we're not going to make it. We're going to have to keep the fires of God burning on the altar. Hallelujah. That and that alone will drive back the powers of darkness. Hallelujah. It was at Bethel when Jacob went back and God said, Arise and go back to Bethel. Woo! Hallelujah. When his sons had smit the sons of Shechem because they had defiled their sister Dinah. Come on here now. Oh, come on. And Jacob was afraid. He said, you made me to stink in the face of the inhabitants of this land. And God visited him. And he said, Jacob, go back to Bethel where I first visited you. Woo! Come on now. My God. But before Jacob went back to the Bethel, you know what he said? He said, put away your strange idols. Put away your strange idols. Oh, let me preach to you tonight. What else did he do? They took the earrings out of their ears. They had a cleansing of the jewelry. Oh, come on now. They had a revival of holiness. They had a revival. Oh, my God. Give us a revival of holiness. Give us a revival of the power of God. Give us a revival of the altars at Bethel once more. Hallelujah. Come on here now. Oh, I got a message for you, and I want you to hear it now. Let me tell you something. It's not the time for you ladies to test out the new preacher and start trimming your hair and see what he's going to say about it. It's not time to drag your wedding rings back out and your class rings back out and see what she's going to do about it. Come on here. You know I'm telling you right. It's time. I said it's time to make up our minds. We're going to go back to Bethel. We're going to go back to the altar. We've got to have revival one more time in our churches. In the church, say amen. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, brother. I'll tell you right now. There'll be people. That'll drift back in that you're gonna preach to. And they decided they didn't want holiness. They drug their televisions back in, cut their hair. Are y'all still here? Got their slacks on, and now they're gonna come back and see what God's gonna do. My God, could I beg you? Could I please with you? My God to stand your ground and say, Hey, we're not giving up. We're going back to Bethel. We're gonna hold the line. God may have changed the man, but God has not changed his plan. Hallelujah. I said, did anybody believe me tonight? Oh, my God. If you don't think prayer works, you better think again. I'm going to prove it to you here, and I'm going to prove it to you now. Hallelujah. Uh, 30 years, 31 years ago, a little lady sat over in a little church with her niece, with no pastor and no heat. Oh, God. (laughs) Woo! And her niece said, Grandma, how long are you going to keep coming here? There's nobody here. We don't have no preacher. We don't have no heat. Woo! They're getting ready to sell this thing at public auction. But old grandma said, oh, said, hey, Lord, I ain't leaving here till they lock the door and tell me I can't come back in. She said, God is going to send us a man. Woo! <laughs> Glory! 
And I was lucky to be that man that God spoke to in Oklahoma and said, you've got to go to Amosville. Hallelujah. And there's still a church there tonight as a testimony that one woman and one prayer can move the heart of God and bring revival one more time. And the church say amen. Woo! Oh, never underestimate the power of prayer. Oh, come on here now. I said never underestimate the power of prayer. I'd rather fight a bus saw than fight with somebody that's praying. I'd rather tackle a lion than try to tackle somebody that's praying. I'll tell you, prayer has got power. Prayer brings down the mountains. Prayer brings down the devil. Prayer brings down destruction. Prayer brings down defeat. Prayer gives divine healing. My God, let's go back to Bethel one more time. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Glory. I said glory. I said glory. I feel. Woo. I was preaching in Georgia this week, and old brother Noah Phillips, he gets to preaching. He said, Woo, said, I feel something messing with me. Hallelujah. And he kept saying, I feel something messing with me. I feel something messing with me tonight. Hallelujah. I feel a breeze from another country. I tell you, God wants to do it again. I said, God wants to revive us. God wants to renew us. He may have changed the man, but he's never changed the plan. My God, he'll do it again. If somebody, I said, if somebody, We'll pray God will hear from heaven and revive us one more time. Woo! Hallelujah. I'll bring it, if you think that's close, I'll bring it a little closer still. I remember coming here. I don't know where it was, the little tiny white building. Where's that at? That's when I come on the scene. It was in a little tiny white building. I was, depending on who you want to talk to, if you talk to Richard Fazer, he said I was evangelizing. Hallelujah. I thought I was evangelizing. He said I was evangelizing. Some probably thought I was evangelizing. Hallelujah. That's what he told his son, Ronnie. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Let me preach on here a little more. Sorry about that little detour. Forgive me. Back to the point here. I was, I was uh, evangelist. And I was preaching here. And uh, I was staying in the house. Now they had another old house somewhere they would rent it. And all night long. You hear me? All night long. Not one o'clock. Not two o'clock. But I'm telling you, all night long. I heard a woman crying and praying. <laughs> because fixing to take a stand, a very hard stand, fixing to pull someone off the pulpit that didn't belong. And it wasn't a popular move, and it cost him some people. But I'm going to tell you, that praying woman prayed it on through. Hallelujah. And this church lived to grow and get stronger. I want to tell you, brother, there is power in prayer. And no weapon formed against you can prosper. If you find a place of prayer, you may beat a man down with your words. You may beat him down. But I'll tell you, a man that pray will rise again. A woman that will pray will rise again. Hallelujah. Because the grace of God will sustain them. In the dark hours. Woo! It's all right to preach tonight, isn't it? Hallelujah. I'm just going to preach what God told me to preach to you, folks. If you don't like it, take it up with Him when you get to heaven if you make it. Hallelujah. So you shouldn't have said that. Forgive me then. Sorry. Hallelujah. Didn't mean to offend you. Glory. He said, the Lord's told me, i got to go to Jericho. 
You stay here. No, no. If you're going to Jericho, I'm going to Jericho. Woo-hoo. What I'm trying to tell you, what I'm trying to say here is real simple, brother. God, the old timer started Gilgal. The separation. They came out from the world. They shut her down. They got up from the pulpit. But they got up from the altar. They left their tobacco. Yes, sir. Yeah. They took the jaw out of their jaw. Amen. Huh? Amen. Yeah. They took the smokes out of their pocket. They took the rings off their fingers. Are y'all still here? They went home and throw the, oh my God, I feel like preaching tonight. Something messing with me. <laughs> Woo! Come on. They throw their televisions out. They throw their makeup out. They throw their jewelry out. They throw their slacks out. The ladies did. They said, we gotta get started on the right road. Hallelujah. Woo! I still believe you're going to start at the cross. You're going to start at Gilgal. There's going to be a difference. There's going to be a separation. There's going to be a sanctification in the world if we're going to see God do it again. I'm trying to tell you, because they started at Gilgal. And that's why I had to start. I said, that's why I had to start. That's where you had to start. Ah, y'all not helping me. Y'all looking at me in a mighty funny tone of voice here tonight. Hallelujah. I had to go to Bethel. I had to pray. I had to cry. I had to weep. I had to get a hold of God until I was willing to lay aside the things that weighed me down. Oh, yeah. Woo. I got saved. Listen to my day. I got saved in July at the old, at the old church. 40 some years ago. I was 17 years old. 41? Yeah. No, not that long. 40, 39. Hallelujah. I make myself any older than I'm already in. Hallelujah. 56. Hey, I got saved. You understand? And I had to go back to school. I was in the public school. We didn't, the Christian school wasn't even thought of when I was coming along. I had to go back to the public school. And I had to walk in on the first day. And I had to tell the band director, Mr. Weichel, Mr. Weichel, I'm not going to sing any more pop songs. I can't sing anymore. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Was a good friend of mine. Y'all remember that old hymn? Hallelujah. Huh? <laughs> I'd quit singing them old hymns. Huh? Woo! Come on here. God have mercy. I said, I can't sing no more of them songs. He said, well, Paul, this way he told me. He said, I can't change. He said, I can't change my program to suit you. And I said, well, Mr. Wild, you'll have to pull me out of the corral and the madrigals. I got saved. Woo! I got saved! Hallelujah! There came a separation. I had to lay aside. I had to make a change. I had to make up a mind. I was going to serve God. And you got to make up your mind. Are you going to serve God? Are you going to come out? Are you going to stand up and be counted for? Glory, glory. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't see where that was all that bad. Well, oh, I probably shouldn't say this. Hallelujah. And so I won't. No, I won't. We'll be good. Maybe. Hallelujah. For me, for me, for me. It was, you know, that was something I loved. That was something I lived for. I loved to sing. And I could sing fairly good then before I stripped my throat out 36 years of screaming and hollering. Ah! Wasn't too bad. That, to me, was a dividing line. For some of you here at sports, and racing motorcycles and bicycles and hello, are y'all still here? 
It's your hair. It's your jewelry. It's your makeup. It's your t- hey, I don't know. I don't know what's standing between you and revival. I don't know what's, uh, but I'm telling you right now, just because God's changed the man, he hadn't changed the plan. Glory. I said he hadn't changed the plan. You still need to seek God. You still need to pray through. You need, still need to find an altar and get a hold of God and stand on your feet and say, preach it. I'm with you. We're going to live it. Hallelujah. I gotta move on. Oh, glory. He said, I'm going to Jericho. You stay here. No. No, no. Jericho was the place of the miraculous. Another kata Woo! Ha ha! I don't know about you, but I'd like to see a revival of the miraculous again. Huh? My God, would you like to see the walls come tumbling down? Somebody help me preach. I said, wouldn't you like to see the walls come tumbling down? Hey, walls of sickness, walls of doubt, walls of distress, walls of discouragement, walls of wilderness, walls of compromise. My God, bring the walls down and bring the miraculous among us one more time. Heal our sick, raise the dead, revive us again, give us the miraculous again. Woo! Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, yeah. I've seen him heal. I said, I've seen him heal. He's healed me. My sisters, my mother, my grandmother. Oh, somebody. Who here? Who here tonight's ever been healed? Ever been healed? Lift your hand up. Ever been healed? Oh, glory. My God. Huh? Did, did God quit? Did it go out of the Bible? Huh? Is it not in there anymore? Woo! Is it still the children's bread? My God, my God, would somebody get a hold of God and then get a hold of an altar and say, God, break us some bread of divine healing. We need revivals. We need the miraculous. We need a move of God. We need the power of the Holy Ghost to sweep over us and set the captive free and set at liberty those that are in bondage. Woo! Hallelujah. Now listen, I, I don't want to hurt you. Because I'm just as guilty as you are. I stood by God's beds. Lord, God, the surgeon's hands. Oh, God. It's sick. It's sad, but that's what we're down to. Lord God, the surgeon's hands. My God, where is the faith was delivered to the saints that said in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Rise up and be healed. My God, cancer be destroyed. My God, we need a revival of the miraculous power of God to shake us one more time. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I still believe in healing. I still believe in miracles. I still believe in the power of God. Does anybody here dare to say, yes, I believe in the power. Yes, I believe in the miraculous. God, do it again. Let me preach on. Stay here, Elijah. Elijah. I got to go to Jordan. Oh, no, 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 no. no. No, no, no. If you're going, I'm going. Woo! Oh, hallelujah. Well, you got a Jordan. That, my dear friend, is a place of death. We really don't want to hear nothing about Jordan. No, no. We don't want to die to our pride. We're holiness and we're proud of it. Mm, mm, mm. Help me now, preach a little while. Whoa! Come on now. Ah, that old that old backbite spirit. That's gonna die. Oh, that old jealousy. Oh, we couldn't let that die. No. 
Every time Sister Shoop and Snooper sings, she sings better than I do. And I'm praying that one day her voice will get rough and she can't sing. What you need is to get to an altar and get saved. I said you need to get to Jordan and your pride and your jealousy and your envy and your strife has got to die out. Hallelujah. I don't think I'll ever forget years ago. Brother Crop, William F. Crop, deceased in God, was teaching Sunday school. And he, I don't know if he laid out, but he said, I think what he said, I think he just said, because it's not like him, it'd be more like me to lay down. Hallelujah. You know, play it out, you know. It'd be more like me. Hallelujah. I think I'm going to do it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Seen the corpse laying there? Let me tell you something. You can walk by. You can bend over and whisper in his ear, you're stupid. You're ugly. I hate you. I think you're a devil. You know what he'll do? He'll just lay there. Huh? Woo! Huh? Oh, come on. If you think you're dead, just let someone cross you. <laughs> I said, if you think you're dead, just let someone blow the horn at you at the light when you didn't move quite fast. I'm, ah, I'm blowing you. Ah. Huh? <sighs> if you think you're dead, let your wife just look at you a little funny. Got a problem, old lady? Huh? Or your husband dare to tell you to do something. Ain't bossing me around, old man. Mm. Woo! Come on here now and shout if you can. Huh? Oh, let's tell the truth and shame the devil. My God, there's a whole bunch of us right here. I thought I was dead and found out this week I was very much alive. <laughs> just a few days ago, I found out I was very much alive. Someone just did me wrong, crossed me all up, and bless God. <laughs> I got extremely upset, and then I, the next day I felt bad. I mean, they was wrong, and I was right, but I was wrong to be so wrong about being so hot, it's about being so right. Hallelujah. I realized I need to go back to Jordan again and die a little more. Oh, now shout if you can. I said shout if you can now. Hey, brother. Oh, come on here. We got to die out to self. We got to die out to sin. Come on here. We, ah, yeah. Oh, brother, there's going to come a death if we're going to have life, if we're going to live, if we're going to have revival. Something's going to die. It's going to be the old man. It's going to be the old nature. Ah, come on here. Sin has got to be vanquished. And new life has got to come by the power of the Holy Ghost. Woo. I gotta move on here. Now I wanna move on here. So they're walking on. Hey, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The old man <laughs> and the kid. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, son, since you seem like you're determined to go with me, what do you want? Double portion. Great God of heaven. Son, you've asked a hard thing. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. Whoosh. Nevertheless. Thank God for nevertheless. <laughs> Woo! The devil says you're going to die. Nevertheless, God said you're going to live. Amen. The devil said you're going down. Nevertheless, God said you're going up. The devil said you're not going to make it. Nevertheless, God said you're going to make it. You're going to live. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and praise him now. Woo! The devil says, I got God be down. He won't preach no more. He won't run no more. He won't sing no more. Nevertheless, I said, nevertheless, God said he's going to preach again. God said he's going to sing again. God said he's going to shout again. God said he's going to run again. Lift your hands tonight.
I want to tell all how the man are. I want to tell it, brother, any other young preachers here tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, well, I've got some news for you. And I come with a message from heaven for you tonight. Amen. I'm sick and tired of everybody saying, well, it'll never be the same. Ah! Uh, I said, God may change the man, but he hadn't changed the plan. I said, God may change the man, but he hasn't changed the plan. But I hope you boys do farther than I've ever gone. But I hope you do more than I've ever done. But I hope you do more than this preacher's ever done. We've got to have revival. We need another portion. We need a fresh anointing. The devil is out to destroy us. He did not say that I want a double portion of Elijah. He said, I want a double portion of the spirit of Elijah. Oh, help me preach now. Just, just, just settle it. There'll never be another. No one. He was his own man with his own strengths and talents. Are y'all still here? There'll never be another. No, no. She was her own wonderful, gracious woman. But do we shut down? Do we quit? Do we give up? Do we just decide that, well, this is it? We've reached the peak? Did we build all this just to die? Did he bring us this far to, to keep us? Did he teach us to swim, to let us drown? Honda my katayabu hoko bahasai. What I want to, and what I want to tell every one of you, if we will pay the price, and if we will live the life, God will do it again in this generation. God will do it again for these young men. His power is not diminished. His glory is not diminished. His will has never changed that the lost, and the last, and the least, and the broken, and the torn, and the tormented come to the master. Hallelujah. many things that characterize this man, but I'm just going to mention three quickly. Or maybe longly. I don't know whether it be quickly or longly. Hallelujah. But it's all right. I'm going to preach till I get done. Is that all right? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, folks, I promise you before God, I'm not here to entertain you. I'm not here because I needed a place to preach. But I'm going to tell you, I come with a burden on my heart. I've been praying ever since. I said, God, help me to say it just right. Not me, not Paul. No, no, but you, God. Hallelujah. And I mean that from the depth of my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! I would say the first thing that characterized this man. When you think about Elijah, at least for me, I think about the man with the fire. <laughs> Huh? I think about the prophet of fire. Woo! Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I still believe in the fire of Pentecostal power. Ah, come on here. I know, but the Marky, I've done got too old to shout. Well, now some of you may be losing a step a little bit, but the biggest problem with most of us, we've got too stinking cold to shout. <laughs> oh my Lord, baby, I'll, Lord, is that one time I got mixed up there? Oh, hallelujah. Uh, do you hear me? My God. Oh, I, my problem is I just want to make sure I don't get too cold to shout. I, I want to keep the fire burning. I said I want to keep the fire burning. I want the Holy Ghost to move. Tongues and interpretation. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. Let the fire burn. Hallelujah. I bless you, son. Hallelujah. You know, hallelujah. You know, I was raised in the city. I was a city slicker. Raised in Fairfax, Virginia. We used to come down to Amosville. My mother lived there. I think she had a place with Aloy Hit. They rented an old place there. My grandmother did. We used to come down to Amosville. See Uncle Jim. Go by and see Grandma. My grandma always burned and cooked on a wood stove, always. 
till the day she died, she cooked on a wood stove. They, my Uncle Jim made a beautiful, bought an old farmhouse, and I mean, redid it. It was beautiful. They found an old summer kitchen, cleaned it out, moved old feather tick master's mattress over there, and got her old wood stove and lived in the summer kitchen. It's the truth. They built her a brand new brick house. She moved down to the basement, took her old feather mattress, took her old wood stove, and kept on cooking wood and wringing chickens' heads and sticking them in the pot. Yeah, that's the way she was. And as a boy from, from, from uh, Fairfax, I always was fascinated with building them fires. I thought, man, ain't that neat. I thought, man, if I ever get out of this jungle, I'm going to get me a wood stove and I'm going to start a fire. I'm going to have a fire going on. I'm going to be a country boy. Woo, hallelujah. Say, man, you're crazy. You're just getting that figured out? You've been a long time getting there. Hallelujah. Now listen, so I got this church here at Amosville, Virginia. And I went down in the basement looking around, and I saw this pipe, and it looked like it went on up through the roof. And I got to talking to them, and they said, yeah, the former pastor had a wood stove. Man, I brightened up. My God, you'd have thought someone told me they left some gold bars or something down in the basement. So the word got around, the new boy, the new kid on the block, wanted the wood stove. So Ronnie Fraser, my God, he had a stove that it took Hercules and his three brothers to carry down them steps. He made that thing out of armored steel. Hallelujah. <sighs> Lord God, that thing would have never rusted, busted, or been otherwise, otherwise been disgusted. Dusted. And so bless Gus, 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 God wing down there. <laughs> it was a stinking thing, I'm telling you. Hallelujah. You may not understand that, but some do. <laughs> Just <a little. laughs> Whoa! Anyway, we got that down there. Got it hooked up. Well, I guess someone heard the preacher needed some wood, so B brought me some wood by. Dropped a little load of wood off. So, man, I'm, I'm to you talk about, you thought, you, my God, like if you'd give me a Corvette, I wouldn't have been much happier. And so, man, I hauled the wood down there and got the Washington Post and used the whole thing in the stove. Had it all balled up, the whole Washington Post on Sunday. Had it all, you know what I'm saying, I'm a little exaggerating there. There was a lot of paper in there for a little fire. And I put that wood in there. And lo and behold, B had done brought me green wood. And that starts sizzling. I said, glory, let's not guard the ashes, folks. Let's gather some wood. Let's build a fire. Let's say, God, do it again. Give us revival in our day. Give us a move of God in our day. we got to have fire. I pretty well covered this, but I'll just touch it again. Elijah was a holiness man. He looked at that crowd, brother, when he was outnumbered. What was it? How many was a prophet of Baal? I forgot. What was it? Uh, something like that. My God, he was just one old prophet. And not, not only that, but the, the people. They, they, all the people there, too, you know. He looked them all right square in the face. He never flinched. He said, let me tell you how it is, boys. <sighs> You've served Baal, and you've turned from God. You built your little altar, and you prayed to Baal. Hallelujah. I'm going to build an altar and call on the God of heaven. And the God that answered by fire, we're going to let him be God. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Woo. And the old holiness preacher had the fire come down, and they had to fall on their faces and say, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And I'm going to tell you when these liberal churches are dried up and they're blown away, if in the Pentecostal church there's a fire burning, there's going to be some folks that are going to get tired of the cold and they're going to want to come feel the fire of Pentecost one more time. Let's keep the fires burning. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Lastly, I want to tell you, Elijah was a prophet of prayer. Hallelujah. I said he was a man of prayer. He prayed by the brook. He prayed on the mountain. He prayed. He saw the dead raised. The miracles of God move. He was a man that knew how to pray. The disciples never asked the Lord, teach us to do miracles. They never said, teach us to speak in tongues. You know what they said? Lord, teach us to pray. And I said, God, teach us to pray. 
Bible scholars say that Elijah did 16 recorded miracles. But Elisha did 32. He died. They said he'd only done 31. God must have lied. And I was in a battle one day, and they was running. They had a man dead. And they threw him in what they thought was just an old abandoned grave. <laughs> but when it touched the bones of Elijah, he come up out of there again. 32 miracles. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I want to tell you, God wants to do it again. And he wants to do it here. And he, wants to, and he wants to do it anywhere and everywhere that men, women, boys, and girls will humble themselves and pay the price. God will send revival. And my message to you is God may change the man, but he has not changed the plan. Heavenly Father, thank you tonight for your loving kindness and tender mercies. Thank you for the word of God. Lord, you are the lamp, you are the light, you are the truth that we need to help us in this hour. God, I pray, I pray that you would revive us again. Lord, the writer said, in the midst of the years, remember. In the midst of the years, revive, God. Hallelujah. Lord, in the midst of the years, restore. Help us, oh God, to seek your face and call upon your name. While our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I've got a question for you tonight. Got a question for you. Is there anybody in this building honest enough tonight to say, Preacher, I want God to revive me again. I want Him to stir my heart and build a new flame and give me a new burden and give me a new desire. Brother Marky, I need God to touch me. I want to see God do it again. Anybody want to lift your hand? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, maybe not everybody. Maybe not everybody. Maybe not. But I have a feeling that a whole lot of us here tonight could use a touch from God. A whole lot of us here tonight need to find this altar and die out to self and ask God to revive us again. And stir us again. And give us a burden again. And do it again. Shall we stand to our feet? Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Here's what I want us to do tonight. I want us to find a place. And I want us to call on God. And ask God to do it again. I want you to pray that God will help them. To be God's man. Standing in the gap. Will you come and pray?